guys welcome to another presentation by yours truly Ricardo Williams today we'll be doing um, osmosis and uh, the title says osmosis like one two three that's how easy we're going to see um, osmosis today all right so let's get right into our presentation first we're going to define what osmosis is then we're going to explain what is meant by the term selectively permeable. We're going to explain the process of osmosis in different types of solutions, namely the isotonic, hypertonic and hypotonic. And we're going to describe the effects of osmosis on plant and animal cells. Finally, we're going to compare the process of osmosis to diffusion. So let's begin with what is osmosis and I would like to make note a pointer please ensure that you watch my video on the on diffusion before you watch this video now on osmosis so if you have not yet watched my video on diffusion please go ahead and watch that video first and then come back to this one alright so diffusion Osmosis, sorry, is the diffusion or the movement of water across a selectively permeable membrane down its concentration gradient. That is how we would define osmosis. So we need to take that apart now and look at the word selectively permeable. Permeable is actually talking about um, um, is the noun and permeability right um, could be the how we describe the, the ability of a barrier to allow um, object materials to move through it so when we say that a barrier or a membrane in this case is selectively permeable then we are saying that that membrane or that barrier is selectively allowing certain substances to move through it while it might um, stop others from moving through it so the membrane and in this case we're talking about the cell membrane is selectively permeable water will move in the direction where there is a high concentration of solute and hence uh, a lower hence a lower concentration of water so it will move where there is more solute and less water that is what we are trying to say right there so let me recap this slide so we know that osmosis it is the diffusion of water molecules so osmosis is a special type of diffusion because we're only looking at the movement of water molecules alone no other we're not looking at the movement of any other particle we're talking about water molecules alone right and this movement must be occurring across a selectively permeable membrane and the movement must be going down the concentration gradient all right moving on so a simple rule for people to understand osmosis is that that rule is that salt sucks and how we came about with that is that salt is a solute when it is in I concentrate when it is concentrated inside or outside this cell or that should be a cell it will pull water in its direction this is also why you get thirsty after eating something salty so we are saying that the salt and it could be it could be um, sugar as well it doesn't have to be salt any solute right when it is concentrated inside or outside the cell it will pull water in its direction so there and then we understand one of the basic or one of the fundamental rules of um, osmosis osmosis deals with the movement of water particles um, down their concentration gradient and this movement must go across a selectively permeable membrane right now we are understanding that anywhere we have solute in high concentration water it tends to pull water in its direction so water will go towards the 
solute in high concentration right so let us try now to put this into context this is a solution uh, we have several types of solution well three types of solution that we're going to look at the first one is an isotonic solution so if the concentration of a solute which is salt is equal on both sides the water will move back and forth but it won't have any result on the overall amount of water on each side, either side so we're saying here that the water will be going in both direction into and out right in both direction on both sides better way illustration in the diagram you're looking at right here we can see that within this barrier here let us call this a cell there is a 10% salt concentration and outside the con in the container here outside of the cell in the container there is also a 10% salt concentration what this is is that the salt or the solute concentration on both sides inside the cell and outside the cell is equal so therefore the movement of water molecules will be equal in both directions so you will have some water molecules coming in and some water molecules going out that is what um, this is how the movement of water molecules are going to be in an isotonic solution all right so an isotonic solution as we stated up here uh, the concentration there will be no the concentration is equal on both sides and so therefore there is no net movement or resultant movement of water molecules in any one direction it is equal in both directions right and the term iso here means the same so that's where the the name for the solution comes about isotonic solution next we have a hypertonic solution and a hypertonic solution the word hypo here means less in this case there is less salt molecules inside this cell since salt sucks water will move into the cell let me read that again the word hypo means less so in this case there is there are less salt are less solute molecules outside the cell since salt sucks water will move into the cell let's look at that illustration so in this case we're saying that there's less salt solution outside because if you look at the concentration here you see we have 20 percent of the of salt sol concentration inside the cell and 10 percent outside the cell therefore because salt sucks and water will tend to move to where the high concentration of the solute molecules are it will move into the cell good so therefore the direction of water movement in this illustration is into the cell right since the cell will gain water and grow larger so this is like blowing air into a balloon once water continues to move into the cell then the cell will swell right in plant cells the large central vacuole will fill and the plant will become stiff and rigid and the way we describe this in science we say that the plant cell becomes turgid right the cell wall though will keep the cell from bursting because water will continue to move in as long as the concentrations um, between outside and inside is unbalanced once there's a difference in the concentration then water will move in continuously until there is a balance in the concentration that might not happen very quickly so what might happen is that the cell will continue to expand and expand and expand and as a result of that it becomes stiff and rigid we describe it as being turgid good and the cell wall now is going to be very important because it is a wall and it will prevent the cell from expanding any further and so the cell will remain remain in that turgid state that's for plant cells no though in animal cells the cell may be in danger of what actually bursting 
right so if this continues the cell will actually burst luckily organelles called contractile vacuoles will pump out water out of the cell to prevent this and this is for um, um, specialized there are some there are organisms that live in um, aquatic environment are, are known to possess these features in their um, cells so that they you know they keep the balance because they're living in a watery environment so you know that they tend to have issues like these good so now we understand what we talk about the hypotonic solution an hypotonic solution has less solute outside than inside the cell all right so you have to watch the solute concentration anyway you have the higher solute concentration that's where the water is going moving on so in a hypertonic solution now the word hyper means more so in this case it is the opposite of hypo in this case we're gonna have more solute outside of the cell right and as a result of that molecules um water mo solute molecules as a result of that water is going to be pulled outside of the cell so it means that it's going to go in the direction where the higher solute molecules are so if the higher solute concentration of solute molecules is outside the cell then the water is going to move outside the cell good in plant cell the central vacuole will lose water so we're talking about the opposite of hypotonic, hypotonic now. So in hypotonic, the water came into the cell and the cell expanded. But now in hypertonic, the water is moving outside of the cell. So guess what? The vacuole is losing water and collapsing. Right? It's shrinking. Good? And causing the cell to wilt. In ter a term we use to describe this condition now of the cell is flaccid let's look at what we mean right in terms of a diagrammatic representation here we have the higher concentration of salt 20% is outside the cell so the solution is hypertonic right and inside the cell we have 10% so therefore water is going to move to where there is more solute molecules therefore it's moving out right in animal cells the cell will also shrink so just like in plant cell the cell um, the vacuum loses the water and so the cytoplasm going to lose water as well and it will shrink in animal cells the same thing it shrink and in both cases the cell will die right so there are two cases now in hypotonic where the water come into the cell and swell it in plant cells it will swell and reach to a point we say it's turgid but because of the cell wall it will not burst but in animal cells it will burst if you don't have things like contractile vacuole to export some of the water out here we have a condition where if it is these cells are placed in an hypertonic solution water will move out and both cells will shrink and both cells will die right this is why it is dangerous to drink seawater it is a myth that drinking seawater will cause you to go insane but people um but people marooned at sea will speed up dehydration and death by drinking seawater so if that should happen to you don't drink the seawater because you're hastening you're, you're speeding up your own death this is also why salting fields was a common tactic during war it would kill the crops in the field thus causing food shortages so these these this knowledge was used in in a negative way back in those war days all right now to compare osmosis and diffusion we have some similarities both of these processes are passes passive sorry they are passive which means they don't require any or no extra energy right is required for the energy for the molecules to move whatever energy the molecules have already is enough for them to move you don't need to add any energy to this process it is natural 
both osmosis and diffusion they equalize concentrations between two solutions so inside the cell versus outside the cell the, once there's a difference in concentration we create a gradient and once that gradient is there the movement will occur until it is equalized and there is no gradient or there is no difference in both diffusion and osmosis particles will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration in other words you could say that both diffusion and osmosis molecules move down their concentration gradient right in terms of differences now uh, there are about four four there are four major differences in osmosis we only deal with the movement of solvent particles or in other words water particles we only deal with the movement of water water particles in diffusion we deal with any particle any particle is moving down their concentration gradient it is diffusion right water moves in the direction of the higher solute concentration remember this we said that right that water that we said that the golden rule is that salt sucks good so salt being a solute will pull water in its direction as long as it is in a high concentration right water um, molecules are ions move in the direction of low concentration when it comes to diffusion all right so they move in where they are low concentration of themselves it could be they argued out another way around to be the same but we, we term it like this requires a selectively permeable membrane that must be present once we're talking about osmosis you must have a selectively permeable membrane um, where the water molecules will move across uh, as it relates to diffusion though it don't require any selectively permeable membrane all that is needed is for the molecules to spread themselves out evenly okay in osmosis uh, movement uh, covers short distances but in diffusion they cover longer or larger distances so to summarize we can state that osmosis is the diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane down its concentration gradient that is rule and I, we, we remember now that a selectively permeable membrane allows things through it example a cell membrane is selectively permeable means that it allows water and oxygen to freely move right across the cell membrane by diffusion while other substances can't such as larger molecules right and you have in other cases when we go more advanced that some molecules will need assistance to go across the membrane there are three types of solution we know that isotonic iso the prefix iso there mean the same or equal that means the concentration on both sides right of the membrane is the same they are equal good meaning that if we're talking about inside the cell we have 10% salt outside the cell we're gonna have 10% salt solution again so it's equal across the board in hypertonic though outside the cell right you're going to have a higher concentration of salt versus inside the cell with a lower concentration in a hypotonic solution you're gonna have a higher concentration of salt inside the cell versus outside the cell with a lower concentration of salt right so you just have to remember the differences between the concentration of the solute where the high solute concentration is and where the lower solute concentration is as long as the lower solute concentration is inside the cell then you're in an hypertonic as long as the higher solute concentration is inside the cell then you're in an hypotonic and if inside the cell and outside the cell you have the same concentration then you're in an isotonic all right that's all you need to remember to know the direction in which the water will move right and remember the three similarities and the four differences between osmosis and diffusion that's the end of my presentation class please like make a comment subscribe and share